What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So today we're talking about chainsaws. This is a much awaited video on the West Coast felling dogs. I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step detailed review of these three-point felling dogs and I'm going to show you just exactly why they're worth your money. So stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get down to the real reason why we're here today. So one of the things that a lot of people get anxious about and just overall panties in a bunch is new, cool, and innovative stuff that kind of challenges the status quo. So if you're usually into felling dogs and you're looking at sets, you have the offerings from Pilts. So Pilts has an awesome five spike uh, you know, felling dog, but it really doesn't make any sense. And I've ran this felling dog for a long time, and I really just wish there was more here. Uh, the, the spikes are all the same length, except for the bottom one, which is extremely long. And I find myself not even using that spike. So uh, a lot of times that spike is just out there to take an almost extra inch off of your bar. So if you want to run something like this, it's aggressive, it looks cool, but it's not functional in pretty much every way. So I'm gonna roll in a clip here. I'll show you that the one spike doesn't even line up with the kerf, the spike that you basically rotate in on any face cut or back cut, or if you're bucking, it really doesn't line up whatsoever. So I really don't like that aspect of the pilts. I also had to modify these pilts dogs to go on the 462. So a little bit of cutting and uh, you know, adjustment to get them to fit, you know, leaves a little bit to be desired. So those Pilts dogs are awesome and they look cool, but that functionality part is definitely important. So let's go through our West Coast Saul three-point felling dogs. So these things are pretty epic in that they are no frills. Everything on these felling dogs have a purpose. So I'll roll in a clip here of the the uh, the spike in the middle is lined up exactly with the kerf of the chain and this is important we're going to show you i'm going to take you outside and i'm going to show you exactly why this is important so if you're you know running a stock saw and you have these crappy little wow uh i wouldn't even call these spikes i would call these fingernails and you know just having these on a 462 is an absolute shame so let's get those out of here so these felling dogs are made of three three thirty seconds plate and they are pretty stout for what they are i am very impressed with the lineup of both of these inner and outer felling dogs as they literally have zero tolerance they are lined up perfectly so they did an awesome job at the r d and making sure that they got it right the first time so the only qualm that I have is that the bottom spike is a little bit further out for my taste. As you can see, the saw doesn't like to sit up straight. But now, how many times are you going to sit it on the, uh, you know, on the concrete or the ground? It's going to be in dirt or it's going to be dogged into a tree. So I understand why the bottom dog is, uh, you know, shoved out at an angle so that you can dog it into a tree like you see here. So. Uh, there's definitely a lot of you know, thought that went into these dogs and I'm really, really digging it. The three point design looks amazing. You're not gonna add much more than a couple ounces to this you know, setup where you, know, you shouldn't be looking at anything heavy or anything crazy to get what you need. So we're gonna go out, I'm gonna show you exactly how it lines up in the kerf. Um, we're gonna uh, go onto a test piece here. We're not going out to the woods today. I really don't feel like getting the truck ready and uh, going out and doing some cutting. So for instructional purposes only, we're gonna go out to the wood pile and I'm gonna show you exactly how gnarly these dogs work um, and uh, you'll get a hands-on demonstration. Let's go outside. All right guys, so you can see here exactly where that center spike dogs in and it does not slip. Um, this allows for truly one-handed operation when bucking or felling. Uh, it is just an awesome design that just follows the curve of the chain.
All right, so I know you guys are asking, Durbin, what's my price? Well, the felling dogs from West Coast Saw come in anywhere from $15 to $45, depending on what saw you're going to get them for. If you go to their website, westcoastsaw.com, you can navigate through their simple Shopify store and find the right felling dog for you. Now, as of right now in this video, when it was taken uh, or made for that matter, they are only available for steel saws. He has them from homeowner saws, top handled saws, all the way up to a you know your bigger saws. Really doesn't matter, he's got you covered. So he's looking at making dogs for Husqvarna saws and probably all kinds of other things if he was a businessman like myself. So I highly recommend these dogs for the money. Um, there's really nothing to complain about. There are great value for what you get. All right guys, one caveat to all of this is that these felling dogs do not come with the mounting hardware. So if you're already running an aftermarket dog on your outside cover or your clutch cover, uh, you have already invested in the uh, T27 bolts that go into these locations. So if you need these, you can t contact your local steel dealer. You're going to be into them uh, not more than a couple bucks, but hardware is not included and a chain catcher is not included. Um, I don't run a chain catcher. I don't believe in them. I don't run my chain loose enough that they're flying off all over the place. So those are just some of the things that you have to have reasonable expectations about how every single saw is different. So for him to stock all of the little different bolts and uh, all of these different things, he would need to you know, have all kinds of different inventory to make everyone happy. That's just something that I definitely agree. Get your own bolts, take your saw in, and get them from your dealer. One more cool thing that I didn't talk about yet, and that is the water jetting cutout of the WCS for West Coast Saw. I think that is an awesome little second kind of cool to have that logo, uh, you know, water jetted out. That is just cool. I love having it on my saw. Um, you get the exact same fit and finish as you do with the Bark Box. So, Gordy over West Coast Saws, thumbs up, brother. You're doing good things out there. You're making awesome products. Keep on keeping on. I know it's a hustle every day, in and out. And, you know, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, there's always one. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, well, now is the time to click that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video.